Bocce goes to second, giving chase. Tropical Squall, two in front, a length in front. Tropical Squall clings on, led all the way in the flight stakes. And the lady is mine. It's Think About It All Out, Hawaii 5 -0. Think about it, Hawaii 5 -0 lunges. Oh, close here. Did the favourite hang on? Think about it. Spirit reaching, plenty of fight. Rachel King driving hard on just fine. The favourite ahead in front, just fine. Spirit Ridge really trying to come back, just fine. A brave metropolitan win. Oh, she's a lady. Talking about that little lady. And the lady is mine. Democracy manifest charging home. Golden Mile in front from Rodina Kovalika wide out. Rodina! Rodina just won it, I'd say, from Kovalika. Golden Mile. She's a lady. Yes, Tom Jones, she's a lady. Um, our, our staff here in the back room wanted Cindy Lauper. Girls just wanted to have fun. But our musical director, little Tommy Tico here, <laughs> he just uh, overruled them and pulled out Tom Jones. A uh, great weekend for the music and uh, a great weekend for you know, Corey Brown, six winners, and celebrated with his little niece there, Havana. <laughs> played a few songs. Uh, but what a day. Um, handicap racing, there's nothing like it and um, gives everyone an opportunity on a level playing field and you get to show your wares and if you can ride light you get a big chance of getting in yeah. there um, and those two girls yesterday did an amazing job riding perfect races yep. on the two feature winners. It wasn't about the big M's, it wasn't Marera, yeah, right. Moore or McDonald, yeah. it was O'Hara, King and Hieronymus. It was good like, and I, I totally agree Ronnie, that, like both Cathy and Rachel's ride Especially Rachel's on a horse that was suspect at the, you know, the distance. She just gave it an absolute peach, just settled it right in beyond the speed and never panicked, never got there too soon and I just thought it was a great ride. What about the Everest favourite? Think about it. Ah, well, what can he, he just finds a way, doesn't he? Mm. You don't have a record like that. A mm. um, little bit of octagonal about him, never wins yep. by a big space and... Um, He's a winner. He's just a winner, and he's gotten. I think he's room to improve, mm. as you'd expect. Mm. Joe knows he's in the race. The timing's right, yep. and he'll he'll be spot on on the day. And he's a uh, understandably a very very popular racehorse. Out the front, I watching it live. I honestly thought at the the hundred. Hawaii 5 had him on toast. He did. But he just surged again. He just mm. runs through he, the line. He must so have just strong. caught him out the corner of his eye yep. and says, OK, oh, yep. I know where the winning post yep. is. And he did it again. Mar well, Marvellous. We'll get to the Everest in a moment. Let's uh, start with the Epsom. And this was a win for Redina, a Group 1 win, number three in her career for Cathy O'Hara. It was the fifth Epsom for Chris Waller. And his uh, tally goes to a career 152 Group 1 wins. He's on his way to 200. Here's Redina. Yeah, well, firstly, it was a messy race as far as no one... It was just Shin was the only one that made a move. Yep. And it deserved a better fate. Was that He was just unlucky. Um, that The other horse bolted mid-race there, Nugget. Yep. And otherwise it would have been all over. Oh, without a doubt. <clears throat> he set it up with such a good race, like speed. He's such a good rider, Blake Sheen. He just controlled that race, like you said. And then when Damien was having no luck and he put a bit of pressure into the race, that sort of set it up for, for Cathy on the winner. But, uh, mate, great ride. Terrific ride. He's an unassuming horse, this. Uh, Redina, he's just slipped the yep. system all the way through. And when you look at his recent record at the end of last preparation and starting off like this, winning an Epsom uh, at second up after winning a nice race first up, uh, it's a real feather in his cap. But like I said, the, the barriers certainly made the difference. Um, got the perfect run, will to win. He's back in business. And now the next, what do we do now with Kovalika? Mm. Um, he's one of the only horses to make ground from the back, uh, although he did save ground. So uh, do you keep him fresh for an eagle? Uh, Cox Plate, King Charles, I don't know what yeah. they do with a horse like him, but he's, he's ready for a, um, you know, he's back in business, second up there with a lot more to come. Democracy. Um, yeah, well, well, you could make a case that he was going to jump out of the ground with clear running. I reckon if he come off Cathy's back um, and come round Redina, I reckon he picks her up, Ronnie. He threw the line. He was all over the back of him. He was actually lucky, Tyler, that he never come down. He didn't grab a heel, but he was right up the back of him. He had nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah, you could make a case he, he didn't really fully extend there the last 50 metres at least. Barbie's Fox has overachieved here. 
Um, looking at things in general, I think the two best runs in the race, considering, are the top weight, my Oberon again. Yep. He, he hasn't, he's had a lot of excuses <laughs> in big races, but wide, um, big weight, the way the race was run was completely against him. And, well, wasn't hoping your heart's race was getting back like that, having to make a long, sustained run. And, uh, look, the inevitable was fantastic. Just nothing went right no, for him at all. Absolutely nothing. Even at the sort of the, I would say, about the 1,200 metres, Ronnie, he positioned up OK, the inevitable, but then a lot was going on, like you said, and then he got shuffled back. He ended up back second, third, last. Had absolutely no luck. Look at him still there. He's not even midfield. In the last 50, just charges through the line. He was probably nearly a good thing beaten, in my mm -hmm. eyes. Uh, let's go and hear from uh, Chris Waller, who was obviously emotional because it had a lot to do with Cathy and a lot to do with uh, Charlie Duckworth as well. And uh, we'll hear from Cathy O'Hara speaking to Corey Brown. He was always set for the race after Queensland, but um, yeah, just things got away on us and he was only having his first up run two weeks ago, but Cathy did a great job on him that day and he gets into the race with a nice light weight and a nice draw again today and she's an amazing horse person, she, she lives for her horses and, and Charlie's obviously great too. Yeah, they've been great, Charlie's been fantastic to you, he's been your right hand man and of course they're looking after Nature Strip these days, aren't they? They, they are. <laughs> they had him here looking terrific, and Kathy was out shampooing Nature Strip and getting him looking right for today, then gets in the car, throws the silks on, and yeah. rides a Group 1 winner. Pretty fitting. What a great thrill to win one of the famous miles here, Max. Mate, a mile at Ramwick is something else, isn't it, yeah. mate? Yeah, very, very proud, very happy. Neil's not here. I'll take all the wraps. Yeah, you on your own. <laughs> He's come a long way. Has he come a long way? We read it. Neil and I read it. Uh, Mick Malone from uh, yeah. ex Kitchman Hills, but uh, Mick had a lot to do with the horse. He's uh, a, a champion man and uh, got a lot of respect for what he and his wife Pauline have done to, to get us to where we are today. And uh, accolades go to the farm and go to Mick and Pauline. So you guys race wiener? We do. Yeah. We yeah. aren't, we, it's in our breeding stock and uh, happy days. And one of the last Redoute's choice, I would imagine. Well, apparently. Don't say too much. Keeps going, mate. Yes, keeps going, son. Congratulations, Kath. How good was that? Yeah, it was awesome. Thanks, Corey. Um, I said it was pretty much a carbon copy of last time, and he was good enough to do his thing, and um, he put his head down when it counted. What about they went slow mid-race, Golden Mile, you thought was going to steal it when he caught their eyes? Yeah, look, when they uh, Oliver come around at the half mile, I was pretty happy that they put a bit more tempo on because I thought oh, they could leave mine a bit flat-footed here, but... Um, I was delighted to see a bit of tempo go in the race and then he was good late. What were your thoughts through the line as, as Joe was getting the outside? I didn't know. I didn't know. I was looking down and I just head down, bum up, trying to just go, go, go. I looked across and then I could hear the camera above and then it stopped and I kept going and I was like, that's not good. <laughs> but I was delighted to see my number in the frame. Jason Collett Daimel. His run was good considering he copped a fair bit of heavy interference here in the straight. Communist Dylan Gibbons. Yeah, he gave me a great feel and had a great run, but as soon as push come to shove, I just lost him. Going global, James McDonald. She worked into a nice enough spot, but just failed to finish. Pounding, Jamie Carr. Yeah, no luck. He jumped too well and I had no cover. Damien Oliver, Nugget. Um, they wanted him written to cover from a wide gate, but they just went too slow. It was impossible for him to get cover from that gate and they were going pretty steady mid-race and he just got keen. He ran well. I'm sure he'll improve by the run. Tom Sherry, Cohen's Lane. Yeah, just not quite up today today. Chamarera, Kovalika. Uh, he was just a bit unlucky to not to win the race. Good run. Madam Pomery, Karen McAvoy. Just had a nice trial, but just didn't get home today. Dean Yandall by Barbie's Fox. Uh, she ran a cracker. Um, I just said the JD and the owners from that from that nice barrier and no weight on her back, we'll try and use that to an advantage. And it panned out that way, and she ran an awesome race. So good to finish fourth. Would have been better to win anyway. Chad Schofield, my Oberon. He went enormous. Obviously, we drew really wide. We covered ground. We had a nice sort of nice trip in the race, following the two favourites with cover. But just the slow speed and the wide run wasn't helpful. But he rattled off a big finish. So for the first time, female jockeys rode a Group One double on Saturday. The Metropolitan was next. It was race nine, and it was just fine. This horse has now had three starts in Australia for three wins. He went round. They just kept backing him. He started a dollar sixty on all totes. $1.75 with Tab, and Rachel King found the best place. Yeah, one of the biggest goes in a big race I've seen for a while. They just didn't. They just wanted to take any price at the finish. Mm. $1.60 every tote. So obviously, 
obviously the pros had him rated very, very short off those two very fast times. How are they uh, feeling here? Uh, in, you're feeling a little sick, <laughs> thinking he's not going to run the mile and a half out. Uh, surely they're not going to try him. I don't. I wouldn't think they'd want to Stretching. reach for the skies and think he's no. a Melbourne Cup. Well, surely not. No. Uh, he's not might and power, but he's he's um, he's a ripping horse. Two thousand. He, he just looks a ripping two thousand metre horse. Yep. Perfect, perfect. But it was just a perfect like ride by Rachel. She just let the speed go, sat on its back, didn't panic. Even when she got the run at the top of the straight, she didn't rush in there. Obviously, because they were, you know, telling her that maybe he's suspect with his overseas form. He hadn't got the distance before. But probably a different setup here in Australia. Run a little bit different and um, probably track conditions as well. Some may say, you know, uh, you know, Spirit Ridge, you know, he just beat Spirit Ridge. He's just, you know, a good stayer, but mm. not a, you know, he's no, not one of our number one, our 18. But to think, like this track wasn't playing that fast yesterday no. and he's broken a 13 year old track record, 2400 metres. Mm. So that's three times now he's put it on the clock and he is an outs you know, that, that's an outstanding win. Spirit um, Ridge, I think that was a PB for him. Oh, it has like to it, be. Mate, he just dug deep. Like well, he, he set there. up the, the record time. Yeah, so he, he was there to be beaten, but he, mate, honestly, it was just a perfect ride. I can't, I can't wrap it enough. It was just a peach ride. Even when she got the run between Timmy Clark and the lead up, she just cruised up, took her time. Perfect. Yeah, a little bit hairy here, but luckily it quickened up uh, Spirit Ridge and then, then everything's sweet. Um, although it was looking sweeter about here than in, in, within an ex, extra 100 metres where it took, a, it took him forever to sort of get past. But they race away from the pack. Yeah. Um, look, I can see that late in the day it was a little bit harder to make ground, which yep. is natural on, on, uh, on hot days. Uh, but he still, he put the time on the board where other horses, you know, when you see horses breaking track records, usually there's two or three or four races that get close to it, mm. and it wasn't, that, it wasn't the case. You talk about history, I mean, there's Gay Waterhouse already had the record of Metropolitan wins at mm. eight over Tommy Smith seven to ninth and Adrian Bott's first. What a day they had. The yep. Waterhouse Bott, yeah, we're going to talk about that right throughout the morning. Four winners and a group one double. Amazing. And a trifecta in the two-year-old race. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, and to think, like, with the stables these days, like the Waller, the Mars, Eustace, the, the, the numbers that they've got mm. compared to Gay and Adrian, I think they're doing a really, really good job. Well, they're job. leading the Premiership. Mm. Yeah. They're leading the Premiership. I think it's 22 to 19. Uh, Waterhouse spot over Waller mm. just at this early part of the season, the season which, which probably hasn't happened in the last 13 years. Yeah. Someone leading Waller. Yeah. yeah, my word. And like, without numbers, like I say, in the old days, Tommy Smith had had twice as many horses as anyone else, and then Gay and Hay in, in the big days, yep. she'd have a lot more horses than anyone else. But now, mm. you know, they'd be fourth or fifth on the list as far as numbers, numbers are concerned go. on yep. the books. Yep. You know, you've got your Mars with 500 plus, the Waller with 400 plus. Mm. And you'd be surprised that Annabelle Nisha would be had 300 plus and they'd be around that mark as mm. well. So, um... Well, their strike like, rate's about one in five. It's incredible. Mm. It's incredible. And here he was, uh, Adrian Bolt. We're going to be hearing quite a bit about him this morning. Uh, he was front and centre yesterday, uh, leading in four winners on the day, including his first Metropolitan. Good speed, good, good, good tempo, and you know there was a few question marks over whether he could say that sort of trip today. No doubt the the weight had helped, but you know to, to be running track records, there's got to be pressure on from the outset. So he's he's been able to answer that today. And normally when they run track records, they're doing it all day, but this is a one-off. Yeah, certainly. Um, and and this performance isn't in isolation with him either. He's he's had the three runs in Australia now and, and been you know very very impressive in each of them, and, and to get to a group one very, very quickly in such a short time here in, in Australia has certainly been very impressive. Well, that was an absolute 10 out of 10 peach ride. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, I just, Spirit Ridge got it pretty comfortable in front and I was sort of aware that, you know, he's a horse that really does stay and I didn't, I wanted to give my bloke as easy a time as possible, but also not give him too much work to do. But uh, luckily it, once he got his nose in front, he was very tough and he wouldn't let the other one get back past him. Chad Schofield, Navajo Pete. Too far. Tyler Schiller, Mr. Waterville. Yeah, probably had to do it a bit tough coming from last, but um, put up a good fight and then probably has faded a bit late. Tally, I hope Ho Ho can. Yeah, he ran super. Uh, the gate wasn't ideal and sort of ended up a little bit further back than what we would have liked, but he's a run an honest race. Jay Ford, Alabia. Uh, yeah, look, on the week back up, he just took the edge off him. He just raced very one pace to the line. 
Dylan Gibbons by Dijon. Yeah, a bit further back than I wanted and from there he almost travelled too good into the straight and just left me in a tricky spot so he should have finished closer. Zach Lloyd, military mission. Yeah, super run. He's, he's, he was really game in his run. Um, I think if he draws Barry, he definitely finishes third and probably a couple of lengths from the winners. Good Kathy, Kathy O'Hara, Wayne Glassby. Yeah, he was a solid effort. Um, he probably just lacks a little bit of turn of foot in this grade, um, but genuine horse. Mick D. Manzois. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of room to really wind up and get at him in the straight, but at the same time, I didn't think there was a lot there. Tim Clark, Major Bill. Yeah, he um, took a little while to find his spot, but he was he was beaten pretty early on and, and may appreciate it more given the track. Benno, Jamie Carr. He feels like he wants 3,000 plus. He's very, very dour early, but his work late is good, so step him up further. Jenny Duggan Torrens. Yeah, he won a super race, got stuck deep, but still finished off very strong. Spirit Ridge, Regan Bayless. Got into a brilliant rhythm. Um, thought we pinched it at the top of the straight and just fine went past him, but he stuck his ears out and um, went right through the line. So he's an older horse, but keeps going well. Damien Oliver, Cleveland. He moved up like a real chance coming around the turn, but then didn't quite go on with it. Karen McAvoy, Kellipore. He's run well, nice trip round and gave a, a nice gallon effort up the running. The first two were off and gone, but he put forward a good effort. All right, I think uh, the tally stands for Gay now. 157 Group 1 career wins, mm. 23 with, um, with Adrian. We'll take a break. When we'll come back, we'll uh, have a look at the Everest picture. Uh, we saw the favourite win yesterday, and we saw a couple of others put their hand up. into the Premier Stakes yesterday. His first run before the Everest. His only run before the Everest. He was a $4 favourite for the big one, the $20 million big one. And he stays at $4. They tinkered with his price. He came into three fifty, but quickly out to $4. Funnily enough, his stablemate private I was the horse that firmed yesterday. Six into five, and he only had a walk around the, uh, the stalls area. Uh, here he is, the Everest favourite. Well, what do we want to say about him? I think it's, his form speaks for itself. Yep. It wasn't a really fast race, so he adapted as far as that. He ticked that box off. We know he's better when he gets a fast race. And um, I think he's, he, he actually saw that horse coming because yep. he was coming to win yep. a Y50. And he, he just caught him out the corner of his eye and, and just surged there late. Couldn't agree more, Ronnie. And going up the inside like this, I'm not saying horses can't do it, but it's not great when they box seat like that because they're always educated to come round. I know he's lightly raced. Um, Hawaii Five O honestly had him on toast at the hundred. Um, I said, "Well, Nash is just going to pick him up here yeah. and throw this horse over the line." But honestly, um, think about it. Seeing him in the corner of the eye, like you said, and just surged late. He really lifted her. Lifted well. Mm. When Nash looms up like that, it's usually <laughs> ten game, out of, game yeah. over. Usually game over, That's isn't it? It's but like he just run into the wrong horse there. Yeah. Like uh, but look, he, that, you, you don't need to sectional times to tell you that Hawaii Five O was the sectional star of the day. Yep. They've come home in thirty three six. He's come from back off the pack. Everest, yes, I can understand he'd be likeable, be a lot more likeable in a fast race. He's just looking a beautiful, no, I keep saying it, the, the, the eagle horse. Um, there's lo lots of options for him and he's come up better than ever. It's just a matter of keeping him mad fresh enough because I don't, I don't think 1200's his sweet spot and he's still being very competitive. So, yep, I say, yeah, give him a slot if you want because he'll run well. Yep. And Bella Nipotina went good for a horse that's probably, uh, she's better at, um, with a touch of give in the ground. And she, she probably, <clears throat> a horse that needs to come round him as well, Ronnie. She got up underneath him, no other options for Craig Williams, but didn't get daylight really at the right time and probably a better horse on the outside coming coming around them. Mm. Alcohol free, what'd you make of her? Thought she run terrific. Um, yeah, just wasn't in the right spots. Um, got tangled up in behind him, then went Hawaii Five O come past, full of momentum. Sort of, sort of sat on a, sort of on a backside again. But through the line, she was really, really strong. But maybe fourteen hundred. Oh yeah, well look, look it's, it's, there's twenty million reasons why you want him to run twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. But sometimes. Uh, she's an ideal invitation type of mare. She's all class, yep. but we're just trying to make her as, uh, 
you know, an Australian sprinter, which is not easy. Mm. But she'd still run well. Mm. She'd still run well. Oh, she, I thought she went really well yesterday. We'll come back to Hawaii Five-O and alcohol-free and what Adrian Bott is thinking as far as the Everest goes. But first of all, Joe Pride and Sam Clipperton. Sam's always given this horse a lot of room just through the fact he thinks he's on a Ferrari and he's racing against a, a bunch of V-dubs and that's with all respect to his opposition but he just likes giving him galloping room and I'd love to think Everest Day we can draw a middle, uh, a middle sort of barrier and get, and get him to the outside of that running line where he enjoys it the most. Well that's going to come up on Tuesday week. Yes. You'll know your fate. Yeah, yeah, what have you got left in the tank? Well, they haven't it this year, Greg? Um, I can't tell you, Joe, okay, but you, uh, you will be invited. Right, OK. <laughs> OK. Um, what have you left in the tank? Um, oh, it's hard to quantify, but I would think he'll improve at least a couple of lengths. And um, if he can do that, I think that puts him in the picture. They've run a pretty quick time there today. Um, got to leave him fresh, you know, because he's a, at the end of the day, he's a horse who might be able to get a mile um, soon enough. It won't be this prep, so I've got to, you know, I, I, can't, uh, I, ha I can't flatten him at all. I've just got to keep that speed in his legs, and that's it's a bit dangerous in itself because that leaves him fresh. But I, I thought he conducted himself really well here. Though. You must be relieved that's out of the way now. Hey? Mass massive relief. Yeah, it's a long way getting him back to the track. It is, it is, and it's um, it was similar with Private Eye here two weeks ago. It, um, it's sort of nervous weight, but once you've got them up and running in the pep, it, it gets a little bit easier from here. Yeah, I think. Well, two weeks, mate. Yeah, great. Thank you. Well he knows where that winning post is, but that was a little bit hairier than I would have liked. Yeah. Um, I'll be speaking to my heart doctor on Monday. <laughs> You, you, we're so looking forward to seeing him back at the races today. It's been a long wait. It has been, and uh, a lot of uh, expectation comes when you win seven on the trot with a horse like this, but he's a dead set winner, isn't he? Yeah. And he's going to improve in two weeks' time. That would be the plan from Joe all along. I'd like to think so. Pretty hard run today, but uh, he's an exceptional horse. It was a perfect run for him because it just, again, seasons his head a bit more. Uh, he's basically only dashed up two furlongs. And uh, I'm certain that this horse will take a world of improvement out of today. You can even see his coat. It's coming to hand, but it's still a bit raspy and not quite that silk coat that he gets. And uh, yeah, he's amazing. Nasharilla, how are you, 5 -0? Yeah, look, great effort. Um, just stepped a little bit awkwardly, actually. He tried to be first out and he's just... Uh, just met the gates strong as, as they've opened, but um, look, he got into a beautiful rhythm. And uh, look, he's the thing is with the horse, he's going to thrive on the high pressure race of, this, of the Everest. So I think he's, um, you know, hopefully gets picked up. He's a deserved contender, and um, yeah, just just if today couldn't quite get the bottom, and he's there he was running down the favourite. And I reckon it just got a side of us. Yeah, the last two hops and actually found again until then we were, almost had him, you know. Craig Williams, Bella Nipotino. Yeah, really brave her performance. Uh, Kieran Ma debuts has said that she'll even come on from today and you could see that the way that she looked in her coat. Uh, she dwelled a little bit at the start, followed the favourite, the eventual winner, and she dashed with them. She's ran a really good time and, um, and she was very effective today on very firm ground. Alcohol free, John Marrero. She runs good. Uh, she then on wasn't really suited by the pace because the two horses up in front were not going that fast, so she found herself a bit more, a bit uncomfortable, but still run well. James McDonald's Zapatero. She's gone well. She stuck to her guns nicely. Uh, just probably needs a bit of cover. Cote, Jason Collett. He's run well on that grade of race. Blake Shin, Athelrug. Yeah, I thought the horse ran an incredible race. He was left exposed three wide doing the work, but he stuck on well for something a bit easier. Jamie Carr, lost and running. Yeah, I think there's something not right with him at the moment. He's not feeling good in his action. OK, so that's uh, the beaten jockeys. Now, here is what Adrian Bott had to say about his two runners, Hawaii 5 and uh, Alcohol Free. First on Hawaii 5 he certainly put his credentials out there today and, and, and performed very strongly. And you know, I think that's a run showing he's deserving to, to be in the race. There's still further improvement to come, and he's just going to really love and appreciate the setup of, of an Everest, so very happy with where he's at. Um, alcohol free, she was first up today, she probably showed she was a little bit fresh there in the early stages and um, I, I thought she stuck on very well. She just needs probably to, a little bit more pressure in the race will no doubt suit her, but I think there's uh, still significant improvement off the back of that first up run today, so uh, my advice, if we can see her in the race, I, I think you can see significant improvement with her. Okay, let's have a look at the, the missing slots, four of them. 
Chris Waller hasn't made his move. There's some suggestion that Espiona could be their horse. Coolmore, Shinzo, they haven't given up on Shinzo yet. He's in a trial on Tuesday. Mm. So he's back in the picture. Aquas lost Sunshine in Paris, and they were very, very busy yesterday. I heard of at least three horses they were chasing, Imagine. probably more. Uh, and they, I'm sure, uh, are in the mix for Hawaii Five O. And uh, Yulong, now you just heard Adrian Bott there, and he told me yesterday that his advice to Yulong is pick her. Pick her in your yeah. slot. They own her. Pick her in your slot. Now, what does Jerry Harvey, Singleton and Ray Hadley do with Hawaii Five O? Do they try and buy a slot outright and put Hawaii Five O in? Or can they do a deal with Aquas? Now, there, there is all of a sudden a perfect partner. Coolmore yeah. become a perfect partner because they, they just purchase Strawberry Hills, <laughs> uh, Singo's property. There's so many rumours and innuendo going yeah. around it. I say expect the unexpected. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's you along going to do? They're probably going to take their own mare on yep. the advice of the stable. Or if they don't, do they just, you know, they, they, they're big players. They might have another crack at Imperatries, but I don't think it'll happen. But you never know. Oh, during the week there was talk about that, offering yeah. them the slot. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. people are dreaming these rumours up now. Mm. They change every That's time. That's right. <laughs> you hear one and they get bigger and bigger. Yeah, the yeah. goes on top. The Mar was scratched on race morning. Here's Paul Snowden taking up the, uh, the commentary as to what happened with Mar and why he was scratched out of the Premier. So he's just sort of got back to the, the girl, uh, the guys got back to bring him down and he's just walked out half a grade lane behind and um, lucky enough, 12 months ago, well, longer than 12 months ago, before uh, Red Zell second Everest, he walked out sore on the same day. So we decided to install a camera, he lives in his box. So now I'll go back and look at the footage for the last two or three hours and I'll find exactly what happened. But just a, it's more of a chiropractic thing. Um, he's going to be there first thing in the morning. He'll realign him. I don't see this is going to hold us back. And the ambition is to probably trial him as long as he can fix that and he, and he passed some tests that what he's going to have to do from the vets. Um, that's what we'll do. Good luck with him. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a look at the market for the Tab Everest as it stands right now. Uh, here is the market with Think About It. Now, equal favourite with Imperatriz. Now, what's happened here? This has all happened overnight. Uh, Imperatriz was six into four fifty into four dollars. So that's well, and, and very and very doubtful. That's yeah, well, amazing. it doesn't matter. It's a free bet. It's a free bet. That's, that's right. why people are saying, well, if she does run. You know, she's going to be shorter than 450, so everyone's having the free hit throw at the stumps. If she there. does run, she's going to be shorter than four dollars. That's right, and if she doesn't, they get their money back. Yeah. So yeah. that's why you'll see that distorted uh, market view, and uh, that's probably in the percentages there as well. But think about it. Yep, popular. Wish I win. Oh, geez, I'm starting to really like the look of him. Private Eye. Well, Joe's hot on him, and I don't blame him. And uh, then you go down the page. We've got the three-year-old cylinder, and it's it's still going to be it's it's a great race. It's okay. a great race. So they're hoping to trial Marzu on Tuesday. They'll know more today when they they give him the once over, and as long as he's okay. So that's how that trial looks, and, and we expect maybe Marzu to be added to that to that lineup. Mm. Um, here's Matthew Smith talking about Bonus Notches, who's going to that trial. Matt Smith, Bonus Notches going to a pretty hot trial at uh, Rose Hill on Tuesday. Yeah, it's good. We're uh, pretty pleased that they've been able to put that on for us, the club. Uh, it's, it's exactly what he needs. He needs a trip away and a nice uh, hit out. So uh, he'll get that on Tuesday for sure. Okay, so that's the tab horse, uh, Buenos Notches. Now, Kerry Parker, also in that trial with Think It Over, heading to the King Charles. Uh, he's just got to tick over. He's just got to um, turn up, just, just more or less just to keep him ticking along. You know, uh, it'll be four weeks between runs, so... Uh, that's just a, a nice little day out and a gallop uh, just to keep him in the right frame of mind. Then, of course, onto the King Charles, which is shaping up as a massive race, which is not surprising considering the prize money. Oh, exactly right. It was never going to be an easy race. You know, I think anybody that uh, uh, anybody turning up there will be trying to win it, that's for sure. So at least our bloke's in terrific form and, um, you know, all in all, really happy with him. So uh, he'll head on, like I say, that trial on Rose Hill and then uh, off to uh, the King Charles. Well, here's the horse that would be favourite if she did come to the Everest, Imperatriz, who won the Moya on Friday night. Back-to-back -back wins at the Valley and superb again. Ah, yeah, she was. There's no doubting it. There's no doubting. She's a, she's a brilliant mare, a absolutely brilliant mare, and, uh, and she d does the job again. Uh, track, she, track was pretty firm, didn't it? Very firm, very firm. So, very firm. so. so 
Um, we can also, oh, track record, but they both broke the track yeah. record. Amelia's jewel, and they were running fast all night. But it, still, she she held she held it, and she breaks her own um, track record. So job done. Um, I think the second horse, Asfuri, is going to come to Sydney on Everest Day. I mean, if he was to pick up a late entry into the race, so be it. Uh, he's got good form, but if he doesn't, I think he's going to run in the Sydney Stakes. Yeah, I think she, I think it's a, I'm not sure it's a mare or whatever, but whatever they do with her, yeah. she's a very, very sharp, mm. sharp horse. Uh, here is Amelia's jewel in the stock stakes. Track record, uh, she just keeps going to another level. They obviously went very fast, and here she was taking up a position and just proving too strong. An improvement to come, they say. <laughs> It's or, scary. It, it is. Like I, the, the thing I loved the most was adaptability. She was a good thing and he rode her like one. Sometimes you've got to do that. Yep. You know, you don't want to be dragging back last at the valley. Getting stuck behind him. And um, look, she was good. The, the leader was sensational prior to Jenny, setting up the track record time and um, a gap to the rest. So, yeah, I, she's... She's just uh, one of the super, well, she is probably the superstar of Australia yeah. at the moment, with a name on everyone's lips. And what does she do next? That's the big question. Well, there's three options. She goes Turak. Well, what way did she get there? I don't know. More, more now. Yeah. Turak, Cox Plate. Yep. Second option, Turak, Golden Eagle. Yep. Third option, King Charles, Golden Eagle. I'd be going the third option myself. But there's no fourth option. It wouldn't be King Charles Cox Plate because Simon Miller said if she came to Sydney for the King Charles, she'd stay and they'd be locked into the Golden Eagle. Uh, Melbourne are desperate to get her to the Cox Plate. Sydney are desperate to get her to the Golden Eagle. That's understandable. And, and on the King Charles on the way. So, so it's now up to Peter Walsh and Simon Miller to decide where they want to go, but wherever she goes, she's a draw card. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. So we'll leave it to them. It's their decision to make. I'm sure they'll all get good advice. <laughs> and from everyone, everyone, plenty of whining and dining. Yep. <laughs> Write your own ticket for lunch, whatever you want to drink. Yep. Oh, just yep. it's, it's a beautiful it's position to be in. It's all free advice. <laughs> it's all free advice. It's all, it's all there's, free no bill. there's no there's bill. There's no bill at the no. end of the day. No. <laughs> Here's the King Charles market, and we are going to see. Well, you're talking about the King Charles, and you're talking about a mile, and you're talking about the best miler in the country, Mr. Brightside, taking on Amelia's Jewel at weight for age. Fangirl has been set exclusively for this race. This has been eyes on the prize for Chris Waller, and that's dangerous mm -hmm. when Waller sets one for any race. Light Infantry arrives, Think It Over is there. He's going to go around $8 on that, on that market. Think It Over. We'll leave an alligator by What happens if they run I think he's staying. I think he's staying in... Yeah, well, militarised would be a It'd very be a bit interesting. Firmer if they said he was running. Well, there. the three-year-old that could run is uh, NCAP. I like that. I like that having a crack at that. There's always that different form with that X factor, and three-year-olds. Um, well, we've only seen, you know, one King Colorado in the wing stakes so mm. far, mm. and I just think he'd uh, run better than what the market suggested. There. Here's the uh, list of internationals that have arrived. Oh, we've got a Golden Eagle market first of all. Yes. Before we move on to that, the um, oh, that's all right. Stay there. We'll come back to the Golden Eagle. There is the because a lot of these horses are going to the Golden Eagle. We'll have more on this field of um, horses that have arrived in Australia from overseas and where they're going. Now, as you can see, a lot of them are coming across and staying with Australian trainers. There are Golden Eagle contenders in that list. More with James Ross from the ATC on Tuesday night and Trek to the Everest when we talk about the International Brigade who have come in. But here is the market for the Golden Eagle where Amelia's Jewel is the favourite Clearly, $4.50. Now, Legato missed a run yesterday, that very heavy track at Hastings. She was scratched. The Japanese horse, equal second favourite. Ace of Kings flying in for Chris Waller. Now you've got the Everest form. Buenos Notches mm -hmm. is going to try and attempt the double, all going well out of the Everest. And wow. Hawaii 5-0. He's, he's oh, looking goodness. big odds. $15. $15. And, uh, and his sweet zone, uh, Kovalika, mm, went much better yesterday. Uh, is he Panko, probably Cox Plate targets with him. Pericles, yeah. A little setback, but might be back on track. It's amazing, that race. There's another horse that firmed into, uh, I think, $21. It was 51 into 21. Go to the last race yesterday. Now, he is a four-year-old, and that's why we bring it up, and we'll bring this race in now. Uh, Michael Hawke spoke glowingly about Airman after the last. Um, here he is winning. 
off a very, very fast pace in the last. Yep, uh, but that's how they were riding to the pattern late in the day, but I thought it was a lovely rider. He just showed enough aggression, Lloyd, to find himself that with that midfield trailing position, and he's just, uh, he equals the class record here. Um, he's a, just a lovely progressive horse the way I'm looking at him. Yeah. I think he, he could well, you know, be a horse that does step up to that 14, 1500, but um, to do that yesterday, second up, and more to come, I'd suggest. He's a nice horse. He was pretty special too, walking around the yard, Ron. He, he walked in, um, obviously, his first up run was terrific. Second up, he, he just handles himself really, really well for a lightly raced horse. He walked around the enclosure like he owned it. Um, he looked terrific in the coat, and it was a, another great ride by Zach Lloyd. What a guy's is flying. He's a uh, he big dancing. Big dance. He's a, yeah. He yeah. could be five diamonds, big dancing. He's got lots of options there for those horses. I'll show you that big dance market later in the show. Uh, he was second favourite going into that race yesterday in the big dance, which has run over a mile in Melbourne Cup Day. When we come back, we've still got another group one to show you. Tropical Squall. It was uh, Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott and Adam Hieronymus. Now let's go to the flight stakes. It was uh, the fourth leg of the Princess Series and up and all now it had been uh, Kamochi and uh, Tis Invincible battling it out, running the Quinella in the last two and Tropical Squall arrived on the day in typical Waterhouse bot fashion. Yeah, we should have known better. Yeah. We should have known better. It's always easy had... after the event, isn't I it? I know. And so we can always make a case for winners after the race, yeah. but this was could have been the darn obvious. Yep. She just set up really, really well for Adam, and he, he's 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 a short head behind Timmy Clark as far as this um, getting out in front and leading wise goes. And all the all the riders for Gay and Adrian are educated that way. They're great up on speed. They control. Um, obviously, show a little bit of intent the first furlong or two, and then once they get there, they just control the race, and then they're off again, probably five or six hundred from home. But Adam did win this race out in front. It was a really, really good ride. She's just so brave, this Kamochi. She deserved a better fate than where, how she's been. Had excuses in all the, all these big races, but um, her turn will come. Tutta La Vita still got another peak performance in her, much better at the mile yesterday. And look at this Molly Nickers is just, she was a bit dumb in the run. Mm. Uh, she didn't like the inside and then she had to drag back. And then she, I thought she had really legitimate excuses there that she didn't, she wasn't sharp enough to take advantage of that yeah. inside draw. And, and that's what beat her. Um, I think she's one to follow, maybe more so in the autumn, um, next autumn than the spring. But I, I thought her effort was great. Private legacy? Uh, she she looks a real stayer, yeah. but uh, she's had too much racing. It's too yeah. far to go all the way through. I wouldn't yeah. be. So, she's the Oaks filly in the autumn. She looks very immature and still up. Oh, she's come. she's um just got stayer written yeah. all over her. Now, I forgot yesterday that Adam Hieronymus is one of that group of, of people who won their first Group One in COVID. So yeah. he didn't get to celebrate with anyone ah. at the track. He came back to no crowd. And there was there was quite a few during that time. Yeah. And he was one of them. So this was his second group one and he got to celebrate in front of a crowd. Great filly to do it with. Um, you know, famous, famous colours as well. Um, she's, she's got that great racing style, a great racing pattern. She's always looked a, a, a big, strong and, and tough filly that we knew would run out the, the trip strongly. And Adam was able to make it a good test today and sort of work things into his favour. Uh, third in the T race, but you were happy that she'd improved? Yeah, most certainly. She was sort of second up there on a relatively quick turnaround, so wasn't necessarily rushed to get her there, but that was more the run that we thought she, she needed to have to condition her for, for a strong mile here. Um, you know, I still feel, given her breeding, she's got the potential to, to get, over, get over a bit further, um, so we'll see exactly what the path looks like after today. How special is that to ride a winner for Gay and Adrian, Group 1? Yeah, very special. Obviously, I rode my first one for them. Um, the start of the pandemic and no one was there and celebrations were quite um, quiet um, but to write another group one winner for them is yeah very special they've always been there for me and we've both I've got a great relationship with the pair of them although I probably tell a lot of people it's a training trio it's just, it isn't and um, yeah we, we all all three of us work well together and um, it's a big team effort and it's good to sort of get these wins and a filly that has shown a lot of the promise to come and do what she's done today. Dylan Givens, French Endeavour. Yeah, never travelled. It'd be interesting to see how she pulls up. 
Jamie Carr, Molly Nickers. Yeah, she's run enormous. Um, the barrier in there and just wasn't great. She needed room. Um, probably should have run third. Zach Lee, Tiz Invincible. Yeah, very un unfortunate. Just when the barriers come out on yours and a bit of strife. And um, yeah, they made it a genuine mile. So by her seeing three deep, she was doing a lot more work. Craig Williams, Hasty Honey. Yeah, she's um, she blinkers come on today. She offset her barrier draw, got outside the the lead of the eventual winner, and she's they were just a bit too strong and too uh, good for her today. Miss Jolene, Ryan Maloney. Uh, very good last film. Should have probably finished a lot closer. Blake Shin, Captain Amelia. Yeah, great run. Quitted herself well. Um, yeah, ran a good solid fifth. Tyler Schiller, Private Legacy. Yeah, a little bit unlucky when the momentum went into the race, but um, found the line well. Jason Collett, Komachi. Yeah, look, great run. Um, Send behind the winner and come off the spec like I was going to, but I, I just couldn't run it down. Unique ambition, James McDonald. She's a beautiful filly, just might have all come a bit quick. Tuta Levita, Ja Maria. She hits the line very strongly, showing that uh, she's just about there to win another group, another group race. Very good run. Summer loving, Rachel King. Uh, yeah, it's just disappointing today. Um, I think she might have just had enough. Now to the Dulcify, the lead up to the Spring Champion Stakes, and it was that stable again, this time with Gembare. No fluke. He's a good, tough horse. He's always been a horse looking uh, for a bit of ground. He's got a lovely stalking position behind a couple of horses that went out very hard mm. there, and I think he's going to get better as he's, his distances are, are probably increased. Um, what else do we want to say about the race? This is Pushy's first defeat, and I thought he went down in a pretty well a blaze of glory to considering how um, much he was up in class. Tom Kitten lost a little bit of contact with the pack, yeah. but still I thought he was there to win the last bit, but uh, no knock on his performance. Raff Attack was just upset by the other leader in the race. Yeah, I thought, I thought the first two home were really big efforts in the race, considering the speed that they went, especially mid-race when they really, you know, clapped the speed on down the back past a half mile. That's when Tom Kitten come detached from the field. I thought he was really, really game. He chased hard. Um, but, yeah, full credit to the first two. Beaten a long way. I think Raffello's a derby horse. I just think he had to give an impossible start dragging back to last there, and he was quite good. Uh, Adrian Bott and Tim Clark. Keeps improving with, with racing. Um, you know, sort of coming through the, the provincial grades there, but just wanted to go there and give him a bit of confidence. And he was able to certainly take that and showed the good improvement today. And yeah, there's plenty more upside going forward. He looked in a, in a, in a beautiful rhythm throughout. I knew he would be strong late. Um, he's going to appreciate getting out, you know, 2000 and even further. Um, Mum was very tough over that sort of trip. And um, obviously the stallion certainly can produce him over that sort of distance. So throughout the race, I was really happy with where he's positioned. You know, the more pressure there is, the, the more gain Adrian's horses thrive, really. So that uh, wasn't really a concern because I knew he'd be really strong and no, he fought out really well. How far do you reckon he'll get? Oh, look, I thought he could get to a derby trip, um, even this prep, but obviously out to the spring champion and through four weeks' time looks, looks a good target for him. Tommy Berry Ravallo. He just ended up too far back from a bad alley, but he had the flashing light on him late. Chad Schofield Cicada. He found that a bit rich. Jamie Kai, Extreme Spirit. Yeah, he was very disappointing. He didn't really put in much today. Ajita McDee. Uh, yeah, still very green, although he's had the three starts, two wins now. Um, I feel like he'd want the cut out of the ground as well, so further cut out of the ground and see the best of him. Port Lockray, Adam Hieronymus. Yeah, he went great. The speed throughout the middle stages had him stretched, but he'll improve again up in distance. Dylan Gibbons, Kintyre. Yeah, just a bit too aggressive and too far back. Ja Marira, Cap Foray. I uh, actually just run on OK race, I would say. Nashawilla, Tom Kitten. Yeah, look, genuine ran race. My bloke was sort of forced to do a bit of work from the 700 um, to get himself into the race, but I felt his, his, his last furlong was still good and, you know, he'll appreciate getting up over further. Cafe Millennium, Blake Shin. Uh, look, face value, a little bit disappointing, but, um, yeah, just got detached back in the field, leader dominated race, so... He's paid to forgive. Thank you. Tyler Schiller, long jeans. Yeah, he's probably left off the off the bridle most of the race, but um, picked up really nicely the last fella. Jay Ford, noisy boy. Uh, just used him up too much from the wide gate, and he set too quick a tempo. Jason Collett, pushy. Yeah, great run. Um, yes, did it tough, good. Regan Bayless, raff attack. Yeah, I wouldn't swap him for any other horse. Heading towards a spring champion, he'll he'll stay the trip, and he's on target. Well, $13, uh, Raff Attack, uh, off the back of those uh, comments from Regan. But Tom Kitten, the $4 favourite. Um, Gambare, $8.
That is the spring champion on October 28. A break and back with the two-year-olds, the breeders and the gym crack. Okay, here are the uh, two-year-olds. We, what are we playing first? The Breeders Plate, I think we're playing first. Yep. Okay, so this was race three. This was after the fillies. Espionage beats Straight Charge and Prost. Gay and Adrian, one, two, three. Amazing. And uh, look, he landed nice bets, this horse. He was very well specced. Um, obviously, the market and the punters read this race wrong from the trials, which can happen. Uh, but Espionage look, looks a nice horse going forward. Straight Charge, he didn't throw it away. Might be a candidate for Blinkers. Uh, later on, Prost was strong late there. I think Counterpart is a horse for later on, making good round late out wide. He pulled up with a poor post-race recovery scampy, so instead of saying flop of the day, maybe yeah. just let's stay, stay tuned. Excuses. But I thought the winner was, sorry Greg, I thought the winner was really good because he did race three deep with a trail, but then at about the 600, he got popped out, he was four wide. It's a fairly big effort for two-year-olds, or, or for any horse really, to be facing the breeze from the 600 four wide. Um, Blake letting him travel up the rise and then, you know, only put him to the sword the last bit. But I thought it was a pretty good win. Here's uh, Adrian and Blake. Yeah, you know, it's important that they've performed well today and, and all three have got significant upside. But, um, you know, taking nothing away from the winner, he, he, he was really in for the fight. He had to cover a bit of ground and you know, his quality really showed through. And straight charge, wanted to do a lot wrong today. Yeah, uh, that was a little bit surprising. But, um, you know, importantly, when the, when the fight was on, he, he, he really really knuckled down nicely. It uh, 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 looked like he was going to be beaten sort of quite quite easily at one point. Um, by like in the trial? Know, like in the trial and, and, and he came back. He's, he's so incredibly tough so it was a, a great result. Very impressed by this horse and well done to James Harron. Obviously had a long association with him and he's picked another really good colt here. They forked out a bit of money for him but I can see why he's a uh, great demeanour and he's for a two-year-old you think you're riding a you know, an old stager, so it's really impressive. He got into a nice run. Position had to come out a little early, but I was travelling so well, and, you know, he just didn't know how to put that second horse away, um, but it felt like he's got more upside and he's a promising horse. Blake wore those colours on Capitalist and went on to win a golden slipper for James Harron. Now, let's have a look at the gym crack. Found by Corey Brown in the yard, pick of the yard, Manal. And it was a great comeback for Tommy Berry. Yeah, a big tip, I must say. Um, off the beaten track there, but she's obviously a filly that had improved dramatically from the trials. Good moment for Tommy. And, um, yeah, Celestial Bling was well black, backed and just missed. Repose should have won. Um, and Invincible Madison ran at the start and just wasn't herself after that. Celestial Bling, I think, is the horse that's going to be the big improver. Like, it's really hard. He, Adam was in a tricky position. He was trying to get out from behind the leader, and the leader was sort of stopping in his lap, and he just become really unbalanced on the filly uh, several times from about the 300 onwards. And I, I just like the way that she'd run through the line, taking nothing away from the winner. I, but no, I just think, yeah, I think Celestial Bling's probably the, the biggest improver out of them three. All right, here's uh, Michael Freeman and Tommy Berry. She's always showed us a lot at home and the other day in the trials she sort of ended up having to get down on the rails to make a run and she was just very timid in amongst them so she worked so well here on Tuesday um, so it panned out perfectly and you know I'm so happy for Tommy obviously with all his um, in, <laughs> his trials and tribulations mm. over the last six or eight months. And a little bit more, it's more of a special moment isn't it? Oh it does, it, it, it certainly does and you know, we've, we've got a good affiliation, we work him well together and he's liked this filly for a while, so it's, I'm happy for Emirates, who've been very good. So, um, you know, it's a huge thrill for them with the, with the stallion getting the first two-year-old win of the season. Congratulations, Tommy. How good is it to be back in the winner's circle, mate? Yeah, <laughs> I promise I wouldn't get emotional, but it's, <laughs> then these guys come along. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a long road ahead and I learned so much about myself while I was off and built such a good relationship with my kids, just things that uh, it's just made me come into racing with a new new lease of life and a new way of looking at things and there's uh, so many people to thank on my, my, my comeback, my family, my friends, the boys at the turf farm, <laughs> the champions, they'll be roaring right now. My manager Paul Joyce for sticking with me. I gave him hell the last six months I was riding and um, if I've forgotten anyone but... And, Dad at home, I love you, mate. Take us through the race. Yeah, look, she, she bounced really well and 
I actually sent Michael Friedman a message last night. I said, is she all right? You know, she <laughs> kept blowing in the market, but we knew she just had so much improvement coming out of her first, uh, first trial and all the Michaels do, but um, full credit to the team. And, geez, Michael, he's, he's got a good team this year. I can't wait. Well done, Thanks, Corey. We've gone over time just a little bit, but let's have a look at the uh, remaining two races. The Midway, which opened the card, and it was uh, loving Scylla beating Phillipsburg and Go Tropo. Well, it's about time she had some luck. She hadn't had much luck in her three runs back, so uh, good effort. Um, deserved the win, and uh, look, Phillipsburg was uh, okay, and two favourites. Never Well, a state of America never clear, and our Mary Ann never clear any stage. Messy, messy race, I thought. It was. It was messy from the start too, Ronnie, um, but it was just a nice, nice effort by the winner. And here's Unspoken in race number four, a benchmark 88 uh, winning and uh, going in the right direction. Yeah, he is. Sense of timing about him. You know, he's a nice horse for these lots of little targets, your five diamonds and your gongs and whatever. Uh, so they'll pick the right mark with him. Um, he's going well. Highlights. I think Renaissance Woman were just loomed up, knocked up, but I'm convinced she's come up well. But uh, yeah, all honest with the winner, he's doing a good job this prep. Uh, he's done well. One trial, two wins. Yep. And finally, the Kosciuszko market, uh, one market we haven't shown you with the uh, uh, all the slots being filled now. And I'm not sure if any of them are going to... Well, Mago Magic is going to trial on October 3 in, I think, in a couple of days. I think Front Page goes to that trial as well. I okay. think they might both be trialling together. That was a rumour I heard yesterday because I think he was scratched out of a trial recently, but no, it was only to just pull him, uh, save him for the next trial. And it was the day where Corey Brown met Havana Brown. You got, well, a, you got an appointment with Havana. It's not what you yeah. know, it's who you know. The oh. famous DJ. <laughs> I've been waiting for that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when we left last night, they were still going yeah. out the back. Have they no announcement yet on the Everest Entertainment? No. No? No, I haven't heard anything. Must be big. Must, Must be. be big. That's it. Uh, grand final day. Enjoy grand final day if you're watching that. And uh, we'll be back here next Sunday for Thoroughbred Weekly.